everyone, and welcome to the 11th episode of O Talakayan, the telehealth series. O Talakayan is uh, the PAOT's first online interview program, now running in its 11th episode, that tackles different topics and issues in OT practice. For the month of May and a little bit of June, we're still tackling um, telehealth. So I think this is our second to the last um, session that we will um, talk about telehealth-related topics. Hi, Kim. Hi, Lee. Good afternoon to all the viewers of O Talakayan. So maybe we could have a recap of our last episode. So our speaker, Sir Anthony, presented to us cognitive behavioral therapy. So more than its application on telehealth, he made us revisit the concept and how it could be applied during this pandemic. So he reiterated looking on oneself before handling our clients. But then if we are already stable, if we are already ready, then we need to continuously instill hope, continuously facilitate adaptation and survival on the part of our clients. Now, for today's session, we would be focusing on games and activities and how it could be applied in telehealth. And I think this is a very informative session because time and again, the concern of OTs would have something to do with resources, the available materials, the available resources that one can utilize during therapy. And I think our esteemed resource persons for today's session could really help us develop those materials so that we could maximize therapy. So Lee, maybe you could introduce to the viewers our esteemed resource person. Okay. okay. So today we have two special guests. First is Janessa Bulanadi. She is from the University of Santo Tomas. She graduated in 2019. Am I, am I right? And she passed the board exam last August 2019. She's currently working at Milestones Therapy Center and A to DZ Children's Learning House. And she started with telehealth two weeks into the ECQ. And so fresh, no fresh. Hi, Janessa. Hi. Hello. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Hey, next, our, our second guest is actually a speech and language pathologist. So we have Bernice Lopez. Live, live from Lipa, Batangas, <laughs> in, inside her clinic. No? So Bernice has been practicing as a speech pathologist for nine years. She's the owner of Jumpstart Therapy Center in Lipa City, Batangas, where she's in right now. <laughs> and she's been doing telehealth since April 2020. And she's been creating and curating play-based and interactive therapy materials for pediatric the, pop, the pediatric population shared over her Instagram, a crafter teacher. And recently, uh, she's been creating digital therapy materials too in Boom Learning. So it's an online platform that they will um, introduce to us later. Hi, Bernice. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to learn about games and activities. Ako gusto mo sa mga games. So, Kim, simulan na natin. Yes, maybe we could start with how can therapists, OTs at that, make digital games and activities? Maybe you could share to us some tips or tricks as to how we can make games and use it during our therapy session. Maybe we could start with Janessa. Um, I would like to introduce to everybody a page that we recently created. It's called virtualproject.coty. This is, we created this because when we started the ECQ with the telehealth, it was super hard for, it, not man super hard, but there were really limited resources for us to use. And, you know, as OTs, we really need a lot of different things to keep the kids engaged about. So that's why we started this one to be able to share different resources and allow other therapists as well to share uh, their resources through this platform. 
So I'm not alone in creating this one. We have my three other friends who are also occupational therapists. And here they are in the screen. So we have Teacher Dex, Teacher Chowa, and Teacher Jorla. They all work with me in Milestones as well. So we want to talk about how um, we can create these things, right? Tips and tricks. The biggest tip and trick that we actually live by now is when we want to create um, a resource or an output is we think of what, we, what it is we use in the center. So if you're in the center and you want, you're want you meeting this kid and you have a specific toy that you usually use, maybe there is a virtual counterpart to it. So that's what we've been trying to do. Um, recently, that's how, that's how we've been thinking of uh, in creating these resources. Yeah. Um, we use three things mainly. Uh, that would be the Canva, the Boom Learning, and for some, they use PowerPoint. I use Canva and Boom Lear Learning more. Um, I use them together. So Canva is very easy to use. Um, all of your materials are already there. You just have to explore it. So Guru, it would take you about an hour to explore Canva and you'd be getting the hang of it already. You can create different things from presentations to PowerPoint to even posters. Um, other than that, I use Boom Learning. Boom Learning is a more interactive um, platform for the kids that where they can click, they can drag, and they can even type. Usually, I use them together. I use Canva as the background. I, I, I get it, I make it from there, I download it, and then I transfer them to Boom to create it, to make it more interesting and more playful for them to be able to, you know, click and drag and all that. PowerPoint is used by majority a lot also, but then for me, I think it takes longer. I thought, this is for me, yeah. it takes longer to make compared to the Canva and the Boom. Because um, you have to transfer to another slide and all that. Whereas yung kay Boom, you put it there, the kid clicks it, and it's self-checking also. If they click it, oh, okay, tama. If mali, it creates, it parang it shows you na mali yung answer ng kid. And siya mismo, parang nare-reinforce na, okay, mali pala yung answer. So I have to retry. And then when they click and it's right, they get it right, there's a reinforcement as well. So yeah, um, an example for the one that we talked about, we do collaborations, by the way. So there are OTs na they want to collaborate. They want to, uh, uh, parang they want to create resources, but then they're having a hard time creating the resource itself. So we're here to help. The four of us are here to help. They just have to message us. This is an example of a resource. This is by O.T. Ali Alvarillo. So this was her idea, actually. Um, she messaged us to create this, this, this resource. No, it's a pizza-making game. So she, she remembered that there was this one um, parang toy in the center where you can build your pizza. And you guys and sabi ko kanina na tip and trick to really remember all the materials that you have in the center and put it into a virtual context. Because I, I have a feeling that majority of the materials that we have can actually be turned into that. So yung toy na yun is you can just put the toppings on the pizza and serve it. But we went a little bit further by creating the parang order form of the kid that they can write or check from the parents to make the other people in the household more um, parang participative. And there's also um, parang game type, no? So which we will be showing later in the Boom video. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Janessa. Maybe Bernice can share to us, OTs, um, certain tips and tricks as to how to make games or utilize them during our therapy sessions. Okay, um, share ko lang din yung screen ko. Ayan. So, actually, to add with what um, Janessa said, I actually used the three uh, platforms that she's using. Sa ngayon, I think it's the easiest and they're all, kumbaga ngayon ay free. Ito yung mga low cost sa ngayon. So, with, like with Canva, complete na siya with the pictures that you'll need. So, kung wala ka namang balak isel or for personal use, anything you find there, you can utilize it. So, Pag kahit may free account ka lang, marami ka nang magagamit. And then yung isa, yung Boom din, ngayon free siya. So yun din yung ginagamit ko. Um, just like what she said, 
in terms of yung interactive, yun yung pinakamagandang gamitin sa ngayon. Ito yung pinaka enjoy ng kids. And then with PowerPoint naman, ako medyo madalas ko rin siyang gamitin for some of my uh, students. Kasi siguro una, familiar na rin ako with PowerPoint. And then yung isang tip rin na same as her tip is kung ano yung ginagamit niyo sa clinic, um, magandang doon magsimula. Lalo na kung nahirapan kayo mag-isip ng idea. Actually, mayroon ko narinig yun yung problem nila. Wala akong hindi ako creative, wala akong idea how to do it. So, you just start with the things that you use kasi we know that these materials are already parang tested. We know that this works for this child. Ito yung interest niya or this um, targets a certain goal. So, maganda to start with that. So, magbigay lang ako ng example on how I do yung con parang conversion. Like what she's, parang she's saying kanina na, we just have to find a way to convert it um, digitally. So, ito, if familiar kayo with the flashlight book, <laughs> kasi, ewan ko, favorite ko siya, or favorite din siya ng kids ko. Favorite ko siya gamitin kasi, syempre, engaging siya, interactive siya, and then there are a lot of goals that we could target as a speech and even as OTs, di ba? So, parang ito yung isa kong uh, material na sinimulan na I think, sabi ko, gusto ko siya gawin in a digital way. So, um, in PowerPoint pala, you can just, parang inisip ko lang yung technology niya, kung paano ko siya gagawin. So, yung flashlight book kasi is just three layers. Yung black background, yung paper flashlight, and uh, parang a translucent acetate na printed yung picture. So, parang translucent siya. So, you can do it in PowerPoint also. So, ang kailangan mo lang talaga is yung pictures, yung clip arts. That's all yung resources na kailangan mo. Hindi mo kailangan naman bumili. Makita ka sa internet. And I think it helps to be techy. Pero if you're not, kung marunong ka naman mag-PowerPoint, I think you can um, do this. So, parang ito. Ang layered lang siya. Itong black, nasa pinakalikod siya. And then, meron akong layer na itong mga pictures na black and white. So, ang trick dito, it should be transparent. Transparent everything else except the outline. So, it would be hidden doon sa um, black background. And then, just like the book, layer, layer mo lang siya sa PowerPoint na nasa gitna yung flashlight. So, a child could easily uh, do the dragging with a flashlight. So, madali lang siya kasi PowerPoint lang so, low cost for me. So, ang technique lang is ilalock mo lang lahat ng things na you don't want the child to be um, dragging. Kasi in PowerPoint, if you want to do the drag and drop, unfortunately, you have to do it in the edit mode. So, kaya dito, ilalock ko na everything else except the flashlight. So, yun yung isang example na I think um, na magagawa mo in PowerPoint. If you don't have time to learn, boom, or you think to techy yung boom. And then, if you want free applications naman, ito na, discover ko din, um, if you're using a Mac, you can download yung mga apps to change your cursor into like a flashlight or a magnifying glass. I think for OTs, magagamit nyo to. Although ako, a speech, ginagamit na gamit ko siya. I just incorporate my speech goals. So like the, ito, the flashlight app. Ay, nakikita nyo ba? Nakikita niyo siya? Yung flashlight? Ah, hindi. Okay. Ha? Yung ano to, picture na... Ah, okay. Sige. Yung kanina kong shinare nung... Wait. Ito, dapat pala share desktop. Okay. So, ito. Yan. Parang may change siya into flashlight. So, lumabas na ba siya? Ayan. So, ano lang to? Free app lang din. So, kung wala na rin kayong time to make, um, kailangan nyo lang ng picture. Download lang naman kay sa Google. Everything is in Google. Tapos, another app is called Zoom. Ito, this is called Zoom Me sa Mac. And then, yung isa is Screen Pointer if you want the flashlight one. So, yun. That's for the, I think, the tricks na ano. Kailangan nyo lang siguro mag-aralin or maghanap, mag-research ng some uh, materials na you think you can apply sa um, materials or digital games if you want to create your own. 
there. Okay, thank you, Bernice. Nako, so what you and Janessa are saying is that the OTs don't really need to be very, very techy, you know? They don't really need to learn how to code. Because that's what I, I thought, eh. If you're gonna create parang digital games, parang I thought na pa mga coding involved or parang complex designing involved. So, kahit dito pala, parang ang dami mo nang pwedeng gawin. You just have to be very creative. Okay? Actually, yung next question, medyo nasagot na siya ng konti, no? Kasi uh, we're supposed to ask what resources are available. I remember Janessa presenting Canva, um, Boom, and uh, PowerPoint. But in your experience, are there other, sana, low cost, no? Pero kung ano man, kung, kung binabayaran man, sige, baka may marirecommend na rin kayo. Are there other apps, for example, websites that can be accessed to get similar aside from Canva and Boom? Bernice? So, sige, Bernice muna. Okay. Um, ako, um, there are, Mayroon akong mga siguro ilan na isa-share na I find very helpful for therapists. So, yung isa is yung Toy Theater na website. Wait, try ko rin siya i-share. Okay. Um, okay, ito. So, yung Toy Theater, ito, free lang din siya, pero there are a lot of resources that you can use here. Like, I think itong timer, very useful to for us. If you want a clock during the session. And then there are, ito ginagamit ko to dun sa mga virtual board games that I, I sorry, ito, oh, itong aking spinner. Virtual board games that I make in Boom or in PowerPoint. So, instead of using a physical dice, you can use the spinner as a visual aid. Tapos marami rin games dito. And then yung isa, I always download lang naman sa Pinterest or sa Teachers Pay Teachers yung mga free worksheets. There are a lot there. Hindi nyo kailangan bumili. And yun, utilize yung annotate. And sometimes, syempre for personal use, sinescreenshot ko yung mga images nila. And I try to present it in PowerPoint. Like, I want to make it interactive. Yung mga pre-made na mada-download ko, um, i-edit ko lang siya ng konti or i-present ko siya ng konti differently sa PowerPoint to make it more interactive. So, there are a lot there. Free printers and teachers pay teacher free um, resources. How about si Janessa? Thank you, Bernice. How about Janessa? there. I use several things besides the three that we already mentioned. There are, um, there's Tiny Tap, so it's may games then siya and all majority are free. My friends actually use this, uh, the ones who are co-creators of um, Virtual Project. They mentioned some of these. Um, Twinkle is also free. I think there is a free parang membership. Na you, they will send you worksheets and honestly they're very helpful. Like what teacher Bernie said, you can always change it. Na make it interactive with the kid. You can post it. Parang share screen ka. Tapos kunyari, you're using it with the kid. Parang there's more participation from him or her. Super Duper, I know it has um, free materials until August for now. Tapos, I don't know if you've heard of books. Books is um, parang virtual books. Tapos, parang, parang siyang video na story, but there is the words. Parang yung sa books talaga. So, you can turn off the sounds, the one who is reading. para you can encourage the kid to read with you. And then, there, they also have materials and resources that are free related to the books that you just talked about. Parang may mga characters doon. Which again, like Teacher Bernie said, you can um, parang screen shot all the, the parang characters tapos in, parang include it in your activity. Sometimes I include it and I encourage them to cut the characters parang for cutting or writing their name down. I'm turning it into a different kind of um, worksheet for them. So yeah, these are the certain uh, certain apps na konti lang pero yun nga, they, they provide free materials. Again, we're looking for the low cost since we're doing it at home as well. Um, other Resources is from our page, Project OT, Virtual Project, sorry. 
um, what we do kasi is we tend, we want to share the resources for free for, kasi nga, limited, and we want the OTs to be able to get as much as they can. Yun lang, we just started last month, like, so last May. Medyo konti pa lang yung mga resources namin so far. But it's not limited to um, VP people creating. So again, like I said, we can do collaborations or others. I have other OT friends who would send. Tapos they would ask if we could feature them. Para yun nga, free so other people can use it as well, other OTs. So like here, we have the easy recipes. This is by Teacher Kyra. And even the counting cards is by Teacher Gabby. They just send it and we just post it. Um, we just ask them to put their names para we know who it came from or like a logo from them. An example of one of the materials that we have would be like this one. This is from Boom. I'll show the video. So it's interactive again. You can write. This is a virtual board game. You can have your physical dice or you can have an online dice. It's up to you. And you can just move the characters around. So this is one. Another one is the pizza that I was talking about a while ago. We created this um, background thing. Now you can change the the orders of the kids. If you want it to be more harder for your kids, then it's okay, you can change it. Um, but this one is already in Boom. So you just have to create the pizza that was ordered from them by the characters from the previous page. And then you're, it's up to you to check kung tama ba yung ginawa nila. Another one is this one. We noticed also there is a lack of ADL activities online. Parang, so for us OTs, diba, we want there to be an ADL, especially if your kid needs it. Um, it's really hard to find online activities na pwede. So we decided, parang we really need to make one of these. This was, uh, parang we didn't know how to remove kasi the background in the beginning of the picture. Yung mga picture background. So that was challenging for us. When we found out that there is this site that can remove the background from pictures, diba? Pwede yung clip art, pero yung majority kasi wala eh. So we were finally able to. This one, you just drag the clothes onto the, the kids, and then it's up to the kids actually. They can do this on their own. So I know. So this is just an example. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, maybe our OTs now are really um having so many resources in mind already. They're now already knowledgeable. They already have certain ideas as to where they can get their resources. Um, maybe they would also want to know what were those considerations that you had prior to transitioning to this digital platform? So it could be ethical, administrative, or professional considerations before you even consider transitioning to digital platforms. Maybe we could start with Janessa. Hello. Yeah, there. Um, other, well, before providing the virtual or digital activities, we have to take note of several things. No? Number one is knowledge and capability of the child. Can they actually use the computer? Can they drag and drop? Can they type if you want them to type? Or would the activities, the vir virtual, would just be flashing of pictures? So I have kids now, they can't type, they can't um, access the boom cards yet. What we would do is flash pictures, like let's say animals, the part ng obstacle course where they have to get it from the other side of the room and bring it back to the camera side and show it, and then we move to another picture. Or talagang can't access virtual activities and we just have to do PDF resources. So which is, there is a lot naman. Um, next thing we have to take note of is support of the guardian. We know that the parents are back to work now, and sometimes the ones who are left home with the kids would be si Lola or si Ate Kuya or even si Layaya. So what would happen if, let's say, there would be technical difficulties? Can we contact them? Kung we don't have mommy around, can we contact them na, oh, this is how you do it, this is how you teach them. Yun lang, we have to take note of these things. Also, willingness of the child. Sometimes kids actually don't like virtual things. I do have kids that they don't like anything virtual, which is surprising, I know. <laughs> Pero the kids actually, some don't like it. No? Other thi another thing is facilitation of the activity. Um, some are actually doing home programs and sometimes I would give um, activities at home 
na let's say apps na for tracing or or letter recog letter recognition and all these things. Now, my one concern is if I give it to them as a homework or as a home program thing for them to do while I'm not around, will the mother or whoever the caregiver would be be watching the kid perform or wala or si baby lang tapos click click kasi either that wala din siya matututunan because there would be just clicking 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 unlike the if mommy is around and you were able to instruct mommy how to do it properly then everything would be fine so again yun nga uh, facilitation of the activity at home another thing is the safety and privacy so th i think this is a big thing especially once we started the telehealth with all the things that's been happening with Zoom and all that. Um, a lot of the parents were actually parang scared with telehealth because of privacy of kids, the safety. So I think this is one thing that we have to take note of. Um, is the platform that we're using okay? It's the, is it the type that have that has pop-up ads? You know those game game um, sites that have a lot of pop-up ads? So you have to take note of those things. Okay, thank you. How about for Bernice? Um, actually, quite similar. Yung isa siguro na natutunan ko na kailangan i-consider when we are doing yung um, digital activities na. It's yun nga. Like what she said, yung um, although, syempre, we have, the, we have our goals, we have, we know the behavior of the child, yung sensory profile niya, everything else we consider just like we consider it in, in therapy. Pero in Teletherapy, we have to consider, siguro, one would be the materials at home. If baka kailangan, before you start with teletherapy, you could interview the parents, ask them what materials you could utilize. If hindi lahat ng activities nyo is via screen, especially with OT, so you, you do obstacle course. So, kailangan, anong materials sa bahay, what you can use to, to create uh, or plan an obstacle course. And then, yung isa would be, um, yung nakita kong malaki yung, malaking factor is yung ability nga ng child to use um, the, the gadget if it's a laptop or if it's a, um, a tablet. So, syempre with laptop, if we want to do our interactive games, sometimes we have to let them type or we have to let them use the mouse. And like in our center, we do trial sessions kasi. So, most of the time, dun sa trial sessions, Doon ko chine-check, okay, anong kaya niya sa mouse? Kaya ba niya yung mga drag and drop? Or kaya lang niya mag-click? Sometimes kasi they can, like, move the mouse around and then click on an answer. So, sometimes, I limit my activities to clicking, yung mga clicking activities. Or, dahil siguro speech ako, I don't share control, but I um, encourage them to tell me what to do. So, I think as OTC, do that also. Good opportunity din yun for you and for the child na yun nga mag-communicate sila like teacher can you put put the dog in the house inside the house ganyan so instead of them doing it kasi minsan hindi nila kaya and if we fail to consider that kasi sometimes like i have a student na trigger yung siguro frustration niya kasi he wants to try it pero hindi niya talaga kaya so if biglang iyak na lang sa session kasi hindi niya magawa and then ang challenge naman sometimes also is Parents try to assist with like with the use of the mouse. And the problem naman dun is they assist also with what to answer. So diba, as therapists, important sa atin yung process. Import or mali yung naging sagot niya. Okay lang. At least like as therapists, we have to think, bakit siya nagkamali? Eh, ang nagiging problem, if parents assist too much, if we parang siguro, sige mami, try natin, i-drag nyo pa rin. Ang nangyayari, yun nga, si mommy na yung nag-answer. <laughs> nag dinrag na yung hand ng bata. So, yun. So, I think that's a big um, consideration sa pag-telehealth. Okay. So, thank you. Um, maybe that would really give an impression that it wouldn't just be applications or websites or all of these free resources. It would entail a lot of considerations ethically, considering the resources, the context of the family, in order for us to really maximize therapy. Maybe um, our viewers Sorry. would want... I, yes, please. 
Hindi, na curious lang ako. Naisip ko bago tayo magpunta sa audience question, uunahan ko na yung mga audience natin. Meron akong tanong. Kasi, hey, uh, Bernice and Janessa, you've been creating resources eh. So, how do you how do you protect what you create? Kasi, I, I understand, this, si Bernice yata also uh, sells no? uh, product. So, how do you protect this? No? Parang mga copyright, copyright. Mga, may mga ganyan ba tayo dyan? Um, ako siguro doon sa boom, it's not, um, careful lang ako with what I use. Kasi nga, I sell the materials. Actually, I've learned that when you uh, share in boom, even if you, kasi you can share it there for free. Basta once pinublish mo siya sa store, for free or paid, you have to use commercial use clip arts. So, yun yung medyo challenge din. If you want to like, make materials and share them online. Kaya ako medyo marami kong ginagawa sa PowerPoint. So, it's safe na, okay, dun lang yun. Hindi, it's more actually protecting me then na hindi ako na, nakakaano ng copyright. So, yun, I think yun. And then, yung sa materials ko naman, if I do it via Boom, and dahil paid platform siya, or sa ngayon free siya, pero it would be paid after their promo. Um, safe naman yung magagawa mo doon. Pero I think it's more important then to check if the resources I'm using is safe to share or to sell or to distribute. So it's more more that. Si Janessa, ganun din ba? Uh, basically the same then. But um, for us, what we do kasi is, yun nga, we put the logo in the ones that we make. But at the same time kasi, yung sinasabi ni Teacher Bernice, I, we haven't really, parang we don't really get the clip arts from different, and I, I really focus on Canva. I'm not very techy, like majority, you know. I'm really techy, so I just get everything from Canva, because it's, for me, it's easier. Tapos in Boom, when you publish, I think there's, parang yung, parang, there's a thing there where you can write where you got your, your items, right? So I write, I do input the Canva, uh, um, what do you call this, website, just for everybody to know that the materials that I got, like the clip art, the moving materials, are not really mine. I didn't make them, but I got them from Canva. All right, thank you. Okay, Kim. <laughs> Maybe our viewers would want certain demonstration as to how we can make these sources. Janessa mentioned a while ago about Canva. Maybe you can show to us how we can do it. Uh, yeah, I can show a sample of, this is actually our very first um, material, no? Wow. I did this for one of my kids. Um, this, it all came from Canva. Nothing was actually, nothing was from Google or anything. Um, hold on. Usually, these things, these are in elements already. So you just type like, let's say, sun, and it comes out. Because <laughs> you just put it all together. Um, some of the templates are already provided by Canva, so you can have a general idea of what you want your background to look like. Tapos, you can even get another template and grab from there and then post it in your template. So this one, this activity right here is just basically an eye spy where the therapist can manipulate what it is the person wants to look for. So an example would be here, an elephant. Um, again, all the materials here, all the pictures, we just grabbed from the elements of um, Canva itself. So, lahat talaga si Canva lang. Okay, so thank you for sharing that one, Janessa. Um, maybe we could entertain certain questions from the audience. Uh huh. Merong tanong. Yeah. Good question. I'm 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 trying to check. Uh, maybe I can ask one. Um, if ever, were there any challenges or any problems that you have encountered when you have utilized these games and digital platforms, and how were you able to troubleshoot it during the therapy session? Brings Janessa. Um, ako siguro pag mahina yung internet. Like, like what 
siguro yung sa Boom, when you use Boom kasi, it should be, syempre, connected kasi internet. And sometimes, if you have too much parang images, matagal din siya mag-load. And I encountered na hindi talaga siya mag-load fully because of my internet connection. So, I had to share like some things like I what I have offline. So, yung isang sigurong tip na mag, mabibigay ko is parang mag-create na kayo ng parang folders nyo in your computer na madaling i-pull out kapag hindi nag-work ang certain activity. Like yun nga, either technical difficulty ba or hindi talaga mag-work sa child. So, sometimes I call it parang virtual toy room. Kasi di ba tayo sa clinic, we just have a toy room kung saan type one materials. Pag hindi na work ang isa, we have to get one. And then, ganun din lang. Ako, siguro, I, I invest in clip arts. I invest in um, mga resources na makikita ko online. So, mostly free yung mga kinukuha ko. Hindi ako masyadong binibili. Binili ko lang is clip arts too. So, I could make um, material. So, I think that's one strategy na naisip ko. Lagi ka lang dapat may um, backup pagka may technical difficulties. Okay, Janessa, any um, encounters or challenges that you had when you had utilized those digital platforms and how were you able to troubleshoot it? Actually, same with teacher Bernice. It's, for me, it's also boom. For me naman, kasi diba we share screen, tapos me, I do share control. Tapos minsan, the kids cannot control the screen itself. Even though, let's say, I tried it the day before with um, let's say my brother, I asked him to to check the controls. Okay naman, pero pagdating on the si on the session itself, biglang ayaw dun sa computer ng kid or ayaw sa iPad ng kid. So parang I think what was mentioned to me is the compatibility of the iPad itself. Majority kasi it happens with iPad. And since majority of the kids, they actually use iPads during teletherapy. Um, pero those who sometimes naman, it's just because my laptop needs to be rebooted. Because once it's rebooted, okay na siya. But again, what we do is we I always have a backup as well. Na there's always a PDF already with mommy na we can use. That was we can just use that instead of the um, interactive activities. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Janessa. Okay, we actually have another question. But I think this will be answered in the next session. Eh. Can you share your experiences on how you facilitate social participation? Actually, isa sabi ka yung plug you know, sa Monday, sa ating uh, episode 12, we'll talk about facilitating group therapy sessions via telehealth. So, baka mas ma-answer ito mas comprehensively doon. No? So, do, for the next session, I eh, siguro. So, um, with that, we thank our two guests uh, for today. Thank you so much, Bernice and Janessa, for being with us. Maybe you can, because, Shampa, you handle social media, your social media pages, and you have products. Maybe you can plug a bit, para malaman din ang ating mga therapists that we have resources available. Uh, maybe Bernice first. Um, okay, so I have Instagram. It's called um, the Crafter Teacher. I share um, maraming ideas for therapy, not just for speech. Actually, I share it for pediatric therapists, for parents, and for early childhood educators. So, uh, mostly ideas or learning or play-based ideas yung nandun. And recently, I've been sharing free resources and I've been sharing also ideas on teletherapy. So, follow nyo na lang sa Instagram or Facebook, The Crafter Teacher. And also on Boom, I have a Boom store. It's also The Crafter Teacher. Yan lang. Thank you. Okay, how about Janessa? Um, we have, so far we only have um, IG, which is this page. You can follow us and we post all of our materials there in the, the link right there. Even the Boom cards are in the link. So if you want anything to get, it's all there and you can just access it. Um, if there would be other therapists who want to collaborate, they can just message us through Virtual Project or they want to share their resources and share it with other therapists for free. We can, we can post them for you. Just make sure you put your logo or your name. Okay. Janessa, this is in Instagram. Do you have 
a Facebook also? So far, wala po. Because wala. we started last month. So, we, okay. we've been doing Instagram pa lang. Aha. Okay. Sige. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Kim? Okay, so it's a very informative session for today, right? Um, we have learned so many things about games, about the digital platforms, but I think what really struck me was it could really be a perfect platform too for collaboration. Um, most OTs would have these concerns when it comes to resources, but they have mentioned, the resource persons have mentioned, you don't need to be techie, you don't need to be that proficient, but still you can come up with this materials and and if each one of these therapists would also collaborate help each other network and probably share materials we could really maximize our therapy sessions so a very good um discussion maybe you could um promote once again our session for uh, okay. thursday that's good before i i promote siguro may dagdag lang ako, no? uh, i've realized that because w- when we think about games and activities um, via telehealth, we think about something na nasa screen lang, no? something na ang gagawin ng child would to, to talk or to move the mouse or the keyboard. But looking at what Bernice and Janessa have designed, you can actually also promote physical activity. No? May mga parang games sila na you have to leap like a frog, do jumping jacks. So if you're an OT who is also working for, uh, with children who need to be moving around, doing some activities, games and um, online activities are still very applicable. Yun. So our next session will be on Monday. This is the last... Ito na nga ba yun? Ito na yung last session on telehealth. Pero hindi pa to katapusan ng ating o talakayan, no? Kim, marami rami pang susunod na session ng o talakayan. But for telehealth, our se- episode 12 will be the last um, talking about telehealth. That's gonna be on Monday, June 15. And we'll talk about um, facilitating group sessions. ba? So hindi lang pang-isahan. Kung tayo nga nakakapag-zoom video conference with many people. Probably, as a telehealth pwede rin, ang group therapy. So, abangan. Ang, uh, maglalabas po tayo ng uh, poster niyan with the registration link. Okay, so uh, again, thank you Bernice and Janessa for being with us this afternoon. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much and thank you to our attendees if you in case you missed this session don't worry if you're a member you'll be able to access this in our uh, YouTube channel AOT. Okay? thank you Kim and thank you thank you Lee thank you to our viewers see you all on Monday bye-bye bye-bye bye